Welcome back everyone to more of our 2022 racing season. We're here during the Atlanta race weekend and the first two events are done and in the books, but they were very different types of races. The truck series, we passed a lot of cars. We got up on that top lane and made some great time. The Xfinity series, however, saw us mired mid-pack and we struggled quite a bit with the handling. So what would the cup race bring? Well, we're about to find out. Let's hop into the single race. Once again, we're at Atlanta BR. Remember, we're on the old configuration, not the new configuration. Hopefully by the time the series makes it back to Atlanta, I will have had an opportunity to test out uh, the new layout and, uh, and use that version. But for right now, we're sticking with the old layout. So we're looking at a lot of tire wear, a lot of fall off in the cars and should be a lot of fun. We're gonna be doing 49 laps, realistic damage level and 100% AI, 38 com opponents. Let's get to it. Drivers, start your engines. All right, there you have it. Engines are fired. We're going green for 49 laps. Can't wait to see how this race turns out. The first two races of the weekend, very different. So how is this one gonna go? I made some changes to the setup after what happened in yesterday's Xfinity Series race. That was very eye-opening. Not that it was terrible, it was actually quite a bit of fun to drive that car, but it opened my eyes to some changes oh, that ready. I will make and see if they help out. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as the race goes on. So the cup cars do definitely do not handle the same as the Xfinity cars. So it's not like you just take the one set up and put it in the two different cars and it handles the same. That's definitely not how it's going to work. But there's always things you can learn and uh, different types of setups, different styles of setups. And so I learned some things about the back end of the car yesterday and how it behaved as the tires wore out. And it revealed some things about the balance of the car that I wanted to address. And since I've been doing some of those same things here in the cup car, then I had some ideas for changes. And we're going to try those out here today and see if they help. But anytime you're dealing with, with a setup, you can make changes and it might help fix some of the issues that you've got, but then at the same time, it might also present new issues. So there's always things to learn. All right, just like yesterday, I'm really hoping that this bottom lane will help us make up some spots. Ooh, that man, Cody, we're way out of the gas there. All right, let's see. Yesterday, I didn't want anything to do with three wide. Yesterday, yesterday the car just was not stable enough to make it happen. I just didn't feel confident in the car. Today, so far, so good. I'm feeling a lot more confident. The car feels more stable. It feels much more grounded and like the car is in the race track. The Xfinity car was very much out of the track. So the changes are helping with that. That was one of the things I wanted to address. And so far, so good on that front. be much more aggressive on the farm and the car is responding but not to the point where it's just getting incredibly loose and out of control. Clear outside. Car outside. Clear outside. So you can see I'm sticking to the bottom right now simply because I just want to see what we've got down here. So far so good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm trying to get positioned in 77 on the entry. Keep low. You can see like right there, I can really get back to the gas and power off the corner. Yesterday I was having to pedal that thing big time most of the most of the race. Clear, outside. Clear. Now tight on entry in the dirty air is something that we're always going to face, but we're constantly trying to figure out ways to get into the quarter better. There we go. 
that was another great example. I barely clipped the apron yesterday. Clear. That would have meant Clear. all hands on deck. We got to save this thing because we're heading straight up the track. Today, not so much. All right, close call there with the 42. But again, a stable car will allow you to make those changes. You can apply the brakes. You can do some things to try to avoid contact that I simply could not do yesterday. All right, two car. Let me get to the inside here. I'm trying to move on through here. Ooh, I thought we were going to have a coming together there for sure. Still there. Clear outside. All right, so we've achieved our first goal. Top 30. Outside. You can see I'm trying to get down really low on the entry of three because the AI will give you that car, that, that lane for the car because they like to hold it out really wide on the entry of three. So if you have a decent run on them, then you can get position on the entry. They'll give you that. Clear outside. All right, so now that we're inside the top 30, we've got a little bit of room in front of us. Let's see what we got. Again, I'm going to try to be really easy on these tires. All right, a little tight there. Getting back to the gas. That's also to be expected after the changes I made. So it's always in steps. Of course, what you guys are seeing are the steps taking place week to week. If I'm working on setups that I'm going to release on the channel, then all of this takes place within, you know, an hour or two. And a lot of times happens within the same, the very same session. But here, I'm spreading that out and not doing any practicing between sessions other than the brief sessions that I talk about where I try to adjust for each track. Oh, that was a very good run. You can see we got a nice run on these guys. So I'm just gonna float this thing into three. No reason to rush it because we got great position here. Keep low. Still there. Still there. Yeah, you got great position. All right. Get this thing Still turned. There. You're on the bottom. Three wide. Car outside. Oh, three wide. I did not realize we were going to be Keep three low. wide. Even if it was Keep just low. briefly. I would rather err on the side of caution there. Keep low. Clear outside. Just trying to be very careful right now. Because if we have the speed to continue moving forward, then we'll move forward. If we don't, then there's no reason to get over aggressive right now this early in the race. So we're right now getting very close to where we ended the day yesterday. Once again with the throttle, you can hear me in the middle of the corner. What I love to do, because I love to drive the car with the throttle. Love to use that gas pedal to drive the car. So I'm simply getting back to the gas to get a feel for is the car ready for me to get back in the gas. And like right there, I had to get out of it simply because I was running up so quickly on the 17. Car outside. You're on the bottom, three wide. Car outside. I try to get back to the gas to see how the car is going to respond. Still there. If the car is really tight, wants to go straight. Stay low. When I get back to the gas, then I know I've gotten back in it too quick. Stay low. Clear outside. There we go. If I get back in the gas and the car continues to rotate and goes the direction I want, then that is a beautiful thing. That's what we're looking for. And then sometimes, like happened a lot yesterday, I would get back to the gas, the car would be unstable and very loose then I had to get back out of the gas and sort of pedal it a little bit for that reason. So what you want is to try to time it by feeling the car, feel the car rotate in the center, 
and then get back to the gas based on that. When you feel that car rotate, that's when you want to start getting into the gas. Very good corner there. Felt a little slow though. Uh, again, don't I do not have the lap times on right now, so I'm just having to go by feel and visually if I'm catching the guys in front of me or not. And right now I'm feeling pretty good. Now granted, we're certainly not on a run that's going to take us to the top five, I don't think. Especially after what we learned yesterday about long run speed of the AI. But right now, I gotta tell you, I'm thinking, we're sitting here in 25th. I'm thinking the top 20 is possible if we don't get bogged down. I'm also not sure how much use, wow, that was a little loose there under, under throttle, but I can live with that. Not near what we had yesterday. Are starting to get really tight on entry, so I'm going to have to adjust my entry for that. Either start using a little bit of brake or just simply get out of the gas and float it in a little bit more. But a top 20, based on what I'm seeing in front of me, how many cars I'm seeing up there, I mean, these guys are only. But 20th position is maybe only a couple of seconds ahead of where we are now. And I feel like that should be reachable if we've got the speed. But we've got to deal with Ryan Priest first. There we go. I'm trying to run either lower or higher in the 15 in fact on corner exit if i can keep it down just like corner entry you see i'm running lower on entry there if i can keep it down lower on exit then that also helps can't do it in three and four because his line is pretty much where i want to be you can see we make up a lot of ground on him on the entry of one and that i'm just floating it in there Let's see if we've got enough to get position here okay. on entry. Sure enough. Clear. All right, so he didn't put up a, a lot of fight there. He's having to pedal it a little bit more than we are right now. So now we'll set our sights on the next group. So now we know that 20th position is 1.1 seconds ahead of where we are, so that is not bad at all. So again, I'm just going to try to float these entries because that's where I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling the most, I should say. There's always things you want the car to do better, always. Even if it's handling really good, which is like you hear them during the cup races or any of the races for that matter, even the leader is talking about things that his car is not doing well, things he needs to be improved, and he's leading the race. But as far as I'm concerned, that's part of your job as the driver, is to never be happy with where the car is. You always want to be pushing. Now, you always have to keep in mind, be realistic about it, you know, I mean, if you're out front and you're leading, and you're leading by, you know, several seconds, stretching, stretching it out, all that kind of stuff, and obviously having a great day, then you don't want to lose your head about the way the car is handling. You've got to be realistic about it, but always be thinking about what the car can do better. And right now, we've just simply gotten tired. That's what it amounts to right now. And that's only going to get worse as we get closer to these guys. Now, if you're wondering why I don't just move up the track, I may try that if this continues and I find that we're going to stall out here. 
and not be able to get any closer, then I will try. There's the call flag. We're halfway home. Oh, there we go. Halfway. But based on how this car is handling, I'm not sure the high side is going to help us out. Because I'm remembering back to the truck race and what it took for our truck to be really good up, up, up top. Yikes. That was all kinds of tight. Now, we got really loose late exit there you can see we're going to have some company from behind after that but that wasn't loose that was actually just push 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 and then it finally the front end ground so that's push loose oh it's so tight i cannot get this thing to rotate like I want. So the changes worked, but I may have gone a little bit too far. Right, we'll stick to the bottom over here since I, in general, seem to be gaining ground on these guys on the entry of one. Uh, we'll see if that's still the case because Busher is now right with us. Yeah, so the changes I made went a little bit too far in the other direction. So now, the car feels pretty good when I get back to the gas as far as the stability. But what I've done is actually made the car a little bit too tight on the exit. So as always, we'll learn from this. We'll adjust, but I can tell you that I like this better than what we had yesterday that we were dealing with. This definitely works better because I feel like I can adjust with this, and we'll make some tweaks here and there. Twenty laps to go. All right, let's try this second groove a little bit here. So we're going to move around a little bit. I was not impressed with the high side. I just it did not have anything for me. I feel like at this point, while I could certainly keep trying it and and mess around, try to figure some things out, uh, by the time we do that, I feel like that would probably do more harm than good because by the time I maybe figured something out, we would have lost so much time that it wouldn't be worth it. And by the way, what happened to Ryan Priest? Was he not just on our back bumper? I was not paying attention, so I have no idea what happened to him. All I know is we have sort of run these guys in front back down. And he is now gone from our rear view mirror. So it makes me feel pretty good that he got right back to our bumper after our uh, moment coming off turn four, but now we're starting to pull back ahead. All right, so now we're essentially there. We've caught these guys in front. All right, let's try some things out there. I want to go to the middle. Oh, just nothing there. Nice. Drove it in, could not get any grip there. All right, let's go back to the bottom here in three and four. As you can see, these guys are pulling me off the corner. All right, that was a little bit better. Floated it in just a little bit more. Got out of the gas earlier in the corner. So let's just keep trying that because we're definitely gaining quite a bit on entry even though I'm floating it in. Just got to figure out this corner exit situation now. I feel 
like at this point we're holding our own in one and two. We're making a lot of on entry. We sort of give some of that back on exit. Car outside. Still there. Clear. Oh, can I hold it? Car outside. Keep low. Ooh, that was tough. Keep Trying low. to stay in the gas and keep it under him. Just could not get the front to rotate keep the low. way I needed to. So Clear right. we cleared him. Can we hold it? Because that Car was a terrible high. entry that we had. Keep high. Terrible angle into the corner. All right, so far, Clear. so good. All right, so we're up to 23rd. I'm pretty happy with that. I felt like if we could make it to the top 25, that would be, based on what we had yesterday, that I would consider that to be pretty good based on the speed, because I figured the, the cup cars are still going to be pretty fast. And I did not want to take away any grip from them. Ooh, that was a good middle of the corner. All right, let's see if we can do anything here with Suarez on entry. I feel like we should, since we do Clear. get into the corners better. So we'll let it slide up the track. I don't mind that, given our angle. All right, so now we got a little bit of clean air. I want to see what this does to the nose. Oh, yeah, that's... I got a little overly ambitious there on what kind of grip we were going to have center of the corner and on exit. Uh, and we did not have it. Car was just really tight still. So now what I'm going to try to figure out is mechanically what do we have versus what is the aero causing? Since we got a little bit of clean air right here. We got just 10 more to go. Alright, we don't have very long to figure it out either. Alright, the way the car feels when I get back to the gas. Right now, again, this is in clean air trying to figure this out. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because when you're in dirty air, then the dirty air is going to cause your car to have certain behaviors. because it's going to take a lot of grip away from you. But when you're in clean air, you can make a determination of, okay, so what is the car mechanically doing when I'm on and off the gas, on and off the brakes, whenever I you know, turn the steering wheel and so forth, versus the dirty air. So just remove that variable and try to deal with only, well, we'd like to say one variable at a time, but uh, we don't always get that luxury. But right now it feels like I probably don't want any more split in the rear springs because I can feel that whenever I get back to the gas, I don't think that's what I want. What I think I'm going to need here is to maybe work with the weight bias a little bit more. Maybe try to uh, work with the, the track bar. Some, which of course there's no longer a track bar in these cars but because I'm still using the, the cup physics then we do have that track bar but yeah I definitely want uh, to loosen up the exit actually I want to loosen up the car overall just all total so that gives me some ideas. So generally, whenever you're working on a setup, for those of you who might not be familiar with how to set up a car, I definitely have videos, plenty of videos here on the channel about doing that in different games from the Heat series. Um, I've got some for NR2003. 
So those videos will give you my approach. And, and I give you a lot to work with in those videos. But what you want to be thinking in your head as you're practicing or during a race as I am now, is you want to be thinking of what is the car doing? Is it tight overall? Is it just tight on entry? Just tight on exit? Or, you know, loose in those situations? Whatever the car might be doing, there are certain adjustments that you can make to the car that will affect the car more in an overall sense. And then there are certain things that you can do to the car that will affect the car more either under power, or under braking, and, and so forth. So you want to be thinking about those things and what you think might be your best opportunity uh, to make some adjustments. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm thinking that overall, I just need a little bit more rotation out of this car. All right, so again, the car is not terrible. It's just too tight for me to continue making up spots. But you can see, I mean, we're running down these guys in front of us. We're just gonna run out of time. And the car is definitely too tight. If we just had a balanced car, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about right here. Where we are right now in the handling of the car versus what would happen if we had a car that was balanced. You can hear me having to go in and out of the gas pedal on the corner exit, just trying to figure it out. When can I get to the gas and stay there? Because right now the gas is, the car's wanting to push out toward the wall on exit. Yep, two to go. All right, just two to go as we see the white flag in the bottom left hand corner there. So what I really want to see there is when I get back to the gas, it helps the car rotate. And I'm not seeing that. I'm just a little shy of that. So if you haven't had an opportunity to watch yesterday's race, then this is a great opportunity to look at the difference. White flag, one more lap to go. Because in today's race, on corner exit, we're just simply too tight. I get back to the gas, the car wants to push out toward the wall on exit. Yesterday, it was the exact opposite. I was getting back in the gas and the car wanted to spin out or get really loose on exit. And part of that's just the difference in the way the cars behave, the difference in the physics. And the other part, well, there's some changes to the setup. There's the checkered flag. Bring it on home. Alright, so we came home in 21st position. Now I am extremely happy about that. That is awesome. Now you can also see the leader was coming up behind us, not too quickly. So we were in no danger immediately of getting. Alright, come on, let's get stopped. Alright, let's hop out of the car. All right, to the standings, of course, we could see from behind us, Kevin Harvick brings home the victory, and it looks like it was pretty close between him and Logano, and then there was a huge gap. So once again, a couple of guys really hit on it, and I kind of like that aspect of it because it gives me the opportunity, uh, as you can see, we were the last car on the lead lap. It gives me an opportunity to, as we move through the field, uh, if we are able to continue moving through, you can see, I mean, there was a steady supply of people we could have passed all the way up to about 13th. Then a small gap there uh, up until the top 10. But then if you, there's a difference between maybe making it to the top 10 and what you're going to need for a victory. Same thing going from a top 10 to a top five. So those are the gaps that I really enjoy because it means that it's not just linear. It's not just going from third to second is the same as going from 10th to ninth. It's, there are gaps there that you're going to need to, uh, that you're going to need to fill with a big time amount of increased speed. So that is something I really enjoy. And again, that's all baked into how I do the AI ratings. And once again, 
I have videos on the channel about how I do those as well. Nothing secretive about how I do them. It's just my preference and some things that I have found that work for me. So that is going to do it for Atlanta race weekend. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to go from here. Um, I'm going to try out the road course, but I'm, I've never been excited, shall we say, about road course racing in NR 2003. So I'll test it out a little bit. And if I don't think that's going to provide uh, great content for us, then I'll simply substitute another track and we'll have fun regardless of where we go. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me and stick around for more NR 2003.